Hey guys, you probably see a mic cord here. The other lapel mic died and I had bought this one, a different one, shorter, for working on the bench because I hated that big bulb thing, battery compartment, too much weight and that's what broke the other mic. It just pulled all the leads out of the actual mic itself. Uh, so I spent hours trying to find that one and I couldn't find that little pal thing to save my life. So I just now bought another one and today I'm waiting for an extension cord. So this will be nice, another eight foot. But for this video I thought, you know, let me just, I was thinking, what have I done this year? What, what's happened and stuff? Usually at the end of the year I do a slideshow to recapture everything. But I thought half year, uh, why don't I do it now? and kind of interesting to just see you know what comes my way i don't know what i'm going to do next and all of a sudden something just comes out of the blue so here you go blue dro is sent to me and yuri contacts me and says yeah you know, i want to send you one of the, the new blue dro touch dro units and uh can you beta test it for me give me some feedback uh, next thing you know, I'm writing a user manual, I'm figuring out all the controls to this thing, the features and stuff. Then you get into custom scale mounts, so I'm doing a drawing on that. And um, helping people out, left and right. <laughs> also, the next thing you know, it, it decided to completely rebuild my first mill. You know, take it completely apart fix things that weren't quite working right, um, another tune-up kind of, so to speak, get it all cleaned up, shiny, it's great. So I'm doing a video showing some of the rebuild stuff that I'm doing, fix the constant force pistons, replace them with new ones. So no sooner than um, I've got this Touch DRO going, discovering all kinds of new capabilities, Bingo, I'm into making gears now for some reason. Um, I guess it was because I remember funky noise was starting to come out of my mini lathe here. So now I'm using the capabilities, the whole, um, the whole circle features in the blue DRO or touch DRO. I'm buying gear cutters and I'm having a blast figuring all this stuff out. Um, now, I'm working with the spindex and old problems of run out and stuff like that are coming to light again. So figure out what to do. Well, well let me buy a collet set. Go to the 5C collets. Why not? Pretty cheap. I think it was 60 bucks off of Amazon. And of course, I'm going to test them all because I'm trying to get the spindex down to almost Zippo run out when I'm holding something. So these all go on the granite block and test indicator to a tenth of a thou is in there. And they're great. I couldn't believe how clean and precise or whatever you want to call it, accurate they are. So heck, you know, next thing I know, I've got problems with the old collet blocks. Let me get the 5C collet blocks. And they turn out incredibly precise and straight and whatever you want to call it again. These are extremely good. And I'm already I've used these guys too uh, this year. I forgot what it was for. Oh, I think it was to make um, an indicator um, holder or whatever, something like that. So now, now I've got all this going on and I'm extremely happy. So I'm looking for more precise stuff. I want to get better things in the shop and I accidentally stumble across precision squares. Here they are. Fantastic. Now I'm into the world of I'm on the granite plate 
figuring out how do you test, measure, or check how square these are. And these things were insane. One of the one in the middle turned out, I, cu I couldn't measure any error in it. So this is fantastic. Now I've got this going on. So now I'm starting to check my angle blocks and not too hot. So what do you do next? Make your own angle blocks. These were nice too. This came out to be a lot easier and quicker than I thought. I mean, lapping it and putting it against my machinist vise to get everything squared up while lapping it. Thrilled to death and in the video doing this, uh, I showed the problem where I explained I had a problem with the other angle blocks trying to get something, hold something square while you clamp it in the vise. So then, um, lo and behold, I get sent a gift best dial indicator I've had. Gauge blocks come out, you start checking it, putting it on the comparator stand, putting my new uh, gauge heads or whatever, brass ones that I made for measuring the height of cutting tools for the lathe. Fantastic uh, dial indicator. So it's now a permanent part of the comparator stand. All right, so now, Again, I ran out of things to do. Now what's going to happen? All of a sudden, boom, Craigslist, another uh, mill, <laughs> second mill. So now I'm into, of course, a complete rebuild. You tear it down, just like I did the first mill here. And of course, I'm doing all the upgrades here now. And here they are. So yeah, belt drive upgrade goes in there. I'm starting to show all of this stuff on YouTube a piece at a time so others can see what's going on or how I do it. Constant force pistons go in there. Um, spindle lock you can see goes on it. New knobs on the quill handle thing there. So all the pieces go together. And in the previous picture you saw a little lock line. So I'm into uh, air upgrade, a new one that I'm putting on the mill now. So, of course, when I get an air upgrade, poof, I got to make my own pump. <laughs> Had one, and I think I showed that in a video, fried the first one. So I made my own, uh, had a spare PWM controller that didn't work very well for uh, power feed for the mill. So it went into this guy. Works absolutely perfect thrilled with this so now this guy goes on either the mill when I'm cutting aluminum to keep chips out of the way um, or goes on the CNC the 3018 okay so now I'm bored again what what else is going to happen and next thing I know well I'm sent a 3d printer so here starts another world three-part video put it together wire it up software all the learning, sharing what I'm learning, um, make my own little bushings at the top of the uh, Z-axis lead screws because they were missing and sloppy, um, make bushings for the lead screw couplings to the stepper motors, all kinds of stuff going on here. And if you look at the picture carefully, you'll see uh, the actual table used to have springs on it, which I got real tired of, because anytime you pull a part off the table, the springs shifted and you're not level again for the next print. So those are plastic, one at a time turned <clears throat> for each specific corner. Now it's all level. I don't have to mess with it anymore when I pull a part off. But yeah, kind of dangerous because if something goes wrong, I can bust some things up because nothing's going to move if that Z head hits it. So, okay, now um, all of a sudden I'm just surfing the internet and I come across a precision chuck. Because I had this little cheap 10 buck made in China one, but I've never had a precision one. I wanted to see what that was. So here... I'm into, now I want to make a really cherry arbor for it, so oof, I'm into a new world of threading. <laughs> and boy, that got involved, I guess everybody saw, you know, 
next thing I know, uh, finding problems all over the place, but, and the actual threading tool that you see in this picture, um, I picked up off of Amazon for $11. You guys haven't seen it used, but I have used it off camera, and it's really nice, but making this guy was a blast. I'm gl really glad I got into threading on the mini lathe, but next that kind of snowballed into problems so here i am fixing the threading dial got rid of it wobbling and problems where it wasn't engaging or it was slipping so the threads wouldn't be trusted and i wound up just keeping the whole thing engaged and forward and reverse with the motor to make the first arbor once i got this and the change gears all fixed up then I started doing, doing it the way you're supposed to be doing it, I guess. You know, you disengage, come out, back up, go back in with the compound, re-engage and go forward. So, um, but now because of all the threading going on and this all fixed up, I got tired of taking that cover off. So here's the cover. Um, get the allen wrench out you undo the screws that are 10 miles long it's like no forget this all right so uh quickly bang out a couple of nice knobs and the trick that i showed in one video that german machinist said you don't care about diameter well that knurling worked three times out of three times every time and you can see these these are the by far the best knurls uh, well, all three of them are the best knurls I've ever done. So now uh, a couple of threads, boom, the knobs out. I don't have to sit there and keep turning it and turning it to get the cover off. So, okay, so I'm back to square one again. Have no idea what I'm going to do next. And then, poof, I'm sent a laser. <laughs> so that was a fun world. Four weeks worth of trying to figure out what in the world's going on how do you work this thing so here i am it's converted doing some burning and testing and so on and finally got it figured out so another three part well, i don't know what i did three parts or what but helping everybody out if you guys want to do the conversion this is how you do it this is the software these are the problems you're going to get into and here's just screwing around wanted to see what a jpeg would do so i pulled my logo in so that's kind of a summary of what's happened so far this year so see you guys next friday i hope you liked it